Hi and welcome back to the VCE PE Kings, a YouTube channel dedicated to helping you achieve the best results possible in your VCE PE studies. If you find this video helpful, please click on the subscribe button and the bell button so you are notified when I've released new videos. And as always, please tell your friends about this channel. Today's video is the second video in the fitness testing series. If you haven't seen my first video on agility testing, please click on the link. Today's video is looking at aerobic capacity testing. So without taking up any more of your valuable time, let's get started. Now, if you have seen my first video on fitness testing, we did go over this before, but it is really important that we understand there's a few things we need to do before we start testing. The first one is to make sure that we have informed consent. So if the person is over 18 that is doing the testing, then they can give informed consent. But if not, if they're 17 or younger, we need to make sure we have informed consent from their parents or legal guardian. We need to make sure that we do a correct warm up, and I'm not going to get into it now, but if you look at my older video on agility testing, it talks about what we need to do as far as a warm up is concerned. Now, today we're going to be looking at four of the tests. We're going to be looking at VO2 max testing, we're going to be looking at the 20 meter shuttle run, otherwise known as the beep test, the yo yo test, and the Rockport 1.6 kilometer walking test. Now, there's two other ones there the 2.4 kilometer run test and the Cooper's 12 minute run test. And if you check the links below, I'll make sure I link a few websites um, that will give you the information that you need to about those. So as you can see, we've got one laboratory test and all the rest are field tests. We have one direct test and the rest of them are indirect. And then we have a couple of maximal and a couple of submaximal tests. So we're having a bit of a look at a couple of those now. So the first test that we're going to be looking at is the VO2 max test. So before we start talking about the, the test, I just want to quickly talk about what VO2 max is. So VO2 max is the maximal amount of oxygen that the body can take in through breathing, can transport, and then use at the muscles to create energy for muscular contraction. As you can see in the photo there, the VO2 max test does require a fair bit of equipment. And most schools probably don't have this equipment. I know my school got, does go to a university to do one or two of these tests. Um, so my students can see how they run. But as you can see, they're wearing a mask. The mask is connected to a tube that goes to a computer that does measure a whole lot of variables of the air that's being breathed in and the air that's being breathed out. You can also see a heart rate monitor and also a treadmill. Now, tests don't have to happen on a treadmill. You can do it on an exercise bike or a rowing machine. But the vast majority of tests that I talk about in my class anyway are about running because most sports are specifically running based sports. So the VO2 max test is a maximal test. So the athlete does run to exhaustion and we'll explain how that happens in a minute in the process. What it does measure is a direct measure of the VO2 max of an individual. So the processes do vary depending on where you do have this test done but they all follow fairly similar sort of thing. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that an athlete completes a warm up. So the machine set on a particular speed and the athlete will you know, run for a couple of minutes to make sure they're nice and warm. When the test begins, the speed of the treadmill will increase in increments until such time that the performer can no longer continue. As we mentioned, it's a maximal test, so they'll be fatigued and there's a certain point where they just can't go anymore. Um, sports that it is specific to are obviously aerobic based events. So we've got marathons, long distance cycling, triathlons, and any other sport where the aerobic system is probably going to be the predominant energy supplier. As you can see there, we have uh, the norms. I'm not gonna read through them because you can, uh, you can read yourself, but I just wanna point out a couple of things. The first one is that the, um, it's measured in milliliters per kilogram per minute. So, that is known as a relative result because it is relative to the body weight of the person performing the event. The, the reason why we use this way is because then we can compare athletes that are different sizes. So we could compare a bodybuilder to a gymnast in the VO2 max testing and those figures would make sense. Whereas if we didn't allow for body weight, that is known as an absolute result and it's really hard to then compare different athletes of different body sizes. So. We often use relative, or we always use relative results because it's easily comparable between different athletes and different sports. Now, the 20 meter shuttle run, you may know this as the multi-stage fitness test. 
or the beep test, but I'm pretty sure this test, out of all the ones we're talking about today, is the one that you would probably be most familiar with. So the multi-stage fitness test is a 20 meter shuttle run that increases um, individual's intensity as the test goes on until you cannot go any further or until you miss two, um, two beeps in a row. Um, this test is used to predict VO2 max, so it doesn't give you an exact result. So it's an indirect test that will give you a good prediction, a fairly decent prediction actually of your VO2 max. So as you already know, the process, you need to line up and you start running 20 meters. You'll hear the tape make a beep. You'll come back and you keep running back and forward, um, making sure you get to the line before the beep until you can't do it anymore. And you can find out your test result. Again, really important for any sport that requires a fair bit of movement. So basketball, netball, AFL, all of those sports do rely on the aerobic, um, the aerobic system to provide a fair amount of, of energy because it does go over two minutes in duration. So the norms are there. These norms are in levels. So if you're above level 13, then you are excellent. If you're between 11 and 13 for males or 10 to 12 for females, you're in very good, so on and so forth. Now we talk about VO2 max and one good thing about the, the beep test is that you can go online and I've just given you an example there about top end sports where you can type in the level that you got and it will give you a VO2 max predicted result. So even if you haven't done a beep test for a while, you can go to one of those websites, type in the best one that you remember ever getting and you can roughly see what your VO2 max would be. Now the yo-yo test is a test similar to the beep test, but it's starting to take over from the beep test a little bit and things like the AFL Draft Combine, for example, are now using the yo-yo test instead of the beep test because they believe it's a more accurate and more specific test for the sports that they are, are doing. So what is the test? Uh, the test is similar in many ways to the beep test. So an athlete does need to run up to a particular line um, before the beep happens and come back, but there are a couple of small changes which I'll explain in the next slide. The test is another indirect test, just like the beep test, because it will give you a predicted score, but it won't test exactly what you've got. And here are the norms. So the norms are given in two ways. You can see how many meters you've ran. So if you can run the test and do over 2,400 meters or 2.4 kilometers, you'll be above level 20 and that's elite. Uh, for females, it's above 1,600 meters and level 17.5. So you can just have a quick look through there. Again, I'm not gonna talk about that, but you can have a look what it is. So the yo-yo test, what we need to do is we need to measure a 20 meter area, just like the beep test, okay? But this one here then has another cone five meters again. So total length is 25 meters, but we need one cone and then 20 meters away, we need another cone, then five meters another. So as you can just see, there. Um, the participants need to start at the starting cone and on the slide here that is the pink cone. So the first thing is when the, the tape tells the person to run they need to run the full 20 meters. Again just like the beep test they need to get to that cone before the beep. As soon as it beeps they need to run back to the starting cone. Again they need to get to that cone before the beep but this is where it changes slightly. We've got another five meter part there. And the athlete, no matter what level they're at, because as, as like in the beep test, the beeps get faster and faster, okay? But that five meters up to that cone and back will always take 10 seconds, okay? So the athlete will run up to that cone and back, they have 10 seconds to do that bit that's indicated in blue before the beep goes off again, and then they follow that same process again. So the Rockport 1.6 kilometer walking test. The first thing is I had a lot of students say, why 1.6K? That sounds pretty stupid. Um, you know, it's not a nice round figure, but when you think about it, this test was designed in America, um, which we'll talk about in a minute because we do talk about pounds for weight rather than kilograms. And if you know anything about American measurement systems, 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. So in America, it would be called the Rockport one mile walking test but in Australia, it's known as the 1.6 kilometer walking test. 
And what it is, it's an aerobic capacity test um, that uses the aerobic system, obviously. Um, and it's a fairly simple task because it just requires walking. Now, I know a lot of people don't like doing the beep test because it's hard. Um, so some people might prefer to do a 1.6 kilometer walking test. But the problem is we do need to make sure that they walk that 1.6 kilometers as fast as they can. So what we do need is we need a flat track. Now, a, um, an athletics track is probably perfect for this. And we need people to walk 1.6 kilometers as quickly as possible. At the end of the walk, we need to immediately take the heart rate. Okay. Now you can do that two ways. You can have a heart rate monitor, which makes it so much more simple. But if not, you can take your heart rate manually. Um, it does say on the slideshow for a minute here, but what I often do is get people to do it for 15 seconds and then times that result by four, um, which will give you a very good result. Um, so before we move on and explain how this test works a little bit more, we have to understand that it is a submaximal test. Um, walking for 1.6 kilometers is not going to fatigue you to exhaustion. So, um, you know, as it says there, they're not, they're not pushing themselves that hard. It is an indirect test because yes, we'll get an understanding of our VO2 max, but it's not directly testing the VO2 max like the VO2 max test earlier was. Okay. And it is also a field test because it's done outside. It's not in a laboratory. So how do we work it out? Predicted VO2 max from the 1.6 walking test. Um, down the bottom here, you can see quite a long and complicated um, formula, which we're going to have a look at and we're going to put plug some uh, figures in there to see how it all works out. So first of all, you need to complete the test. That makes sense. And you need to collect the data. So getting your heart rate straight at the end is the most important piece of data. And then you need to put the data in the equation below. Now, as you can see, it says gender. Okay, and you can't just put male or female in there because it's a mathematical equation. So the way it works is if it's a male doing the test, there's a one there. If it's a female, it's a zero. Okay, and we'll see how that works in a minute. The second thing we need to note is that the weight needs to be in pounds. So just make sure that you convert your weight to pounds before you put it in here and we'll be good to go. Now, I've got a little bit of data here just on you know, a fictitious character, just um, so we can plug this data in. So a person paying, weighing 200 pounds, 28 years old, it's a male. He took 10.66 minutes. Now, I want to quickly just speak about that because 10.66 doesn't sound right, but what that is is 10 minutes and then obviously two-thirds of a minute as well, so 40 seconds, if you will. So um, it's 10 minutes and 40 seconds, but then you know 40 over 60 is um, two thirds, which is 0.66. So if you don't know the maths there, just comment down below um, and I'll be able to help you out and explain that in more detail if you need. And heart rate, the maximum heart rate or the heart rate at the end of the test was 166 beats per minute. So the first thing we need to do and your maths teacher would probably concur is make sure we'd write down the formula. Now, chances are they're not gonna ask you about this formula, but I just want you to understand it anyway. So you'd write down the formula you know, your math teacher would be happy with that. And then what you need to do is then you need to put all the data in. So the next line there in red, you can see all of the data there. Now, anything in brackets, hopefully again, your math teacher would have taught you this. We need to times it. Okay. I don't know what it's called now. It used to be called bod mass when I was at school. I think these days it might be bid mass or something like that. But it, obviously brackets need to be done first. So we do all the multiplication first. Um, so that's what we've got there. And then we need to do the minus and addition. So then we've got there. So you can check those results. I worked them out, hopefully they're correct, but um, 66.78 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Now, if we think back to the norms of the VO2 max test, 66.78 is actually very, very good. And it's probably elite. Okay, so someone in the AFL, for example, might be getting those sorts of scores. Just another interesting fact on VO2 max, highest ever recorded one was about 100 um, by a cross country skier. So very, very aerobically trained athlete considering AFL players at about 60s to 70s for a, a very elite running AFL player. So that's how it all works. Again, if there's a problem with the maths or you don't understand how it all works, please just comment below and I'll make sure that I'll, I'll um, help you out. So in summary, the first one is laboratory tests 
like the VO2 Max test give very accurate results, but cost a lot of money. And the other thing I don't have there is you can only have one person do it at a time. So it's not very good for big groups unless you've got a lot of time to get that testing done. The second one is field testing, like all of the other tests that were mentioned today, um, are not as accurate, but they're cheap. In most cases, you only need you know some cones maybe and a stopwatch, okay, or a, or a CD or you know beep test and that sort of stuff's now on YouTube anyway, so you can get that for free as well. Um, so they're cheap, they're easy to run, and they're very good for large groups. Um, just like any other testing, it is super important that we have informed consent. So please make sure you've got that informed consent and only someone over the age of 18 can actually give informed consent in this scenario. Um, if you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new, please subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when, when I release new videos. And uh, again, as I said earlier on, please let your friends know about this channel. I'm working pretty hard to, uh, to make these uh, little videos and I'd love to make sure that I help as many people as possible. So again, if you have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comments and I'll help you out. But I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll uh, speak to you next time I put out a video. Thanks.